Troop Track is Dave Christiansen's one of his businesses products, correct? Yep. It's Boy Scout software, and this is an upcoming version. And so we're looking at a photo album, and they're always asking for the ability to do this. To be able to go like this, just to just go. And it's uploading probably very slowly over my uh, my fi Faster than if you were on the uh, what is it? The wireless hotspot. <laughs> yeah. And this is going to S3 because what I have here is. Um, the model is set up with support for Paperclip, and so Paperclip is storing it in Amazon S3, and if it ever finishes uploading, you'll see a little check box there. And These the, blue and black bars are the progress bars, right. the ones that aren't moving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the thing is, like, this is kind of uh, hard because in, uh, if you were trying to do this in a form with JavaScript, well, a JavaScript form can't actually touch the the, the hard file, the system. file system, so you can't do this, right? And um, so I'm actually a real cut and paste, like copy other people's stuff coder, um, and that's how I learn to program. And um, so I'm not at the point actually where I can explain every aspect of how this works, but. What I did was use a thing called file drop. And in Rails 3.1, our JavaScript is in the assets file. And this would be in share. And so there was just some JavaScript that I got that does this. And what it really does is it, it takes each file that you drag over into that area and then it does a post with it to a URL. So I had to set the URL, and basically I had to give it the ID of the photo album, and then it's troop photos, because um, that's the Rails path to the, the post is to the, uh, to the index path with the type of post, right? And you can set the max file size, and then max number of files that they can put. At. So if it's larger than two megs, it'll tell them, if it, you put 10 or something, you can only do five. Do I have it set up here? If they don't have HTML5 in their browser, it'll tell them. And um, then it just does a post, and then it renders a template, and it renders a template for each one. And the only really tricky file part of this at all, and it wasn't really tricky, um, if you go to my blog, techdarkside.com, this is explained how I did it, and I, and I got it from an explanation for PHP, right? But the the real trick was that just I had to figure out the Rails version of what the controller does. And it's actually amazingly easy. Because all the. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. But here's my paperclip config. And so you don't have to do anything special in paperclip. You set it up as has attached file of photo with all your styles in your S3 configs. Um, and actually, I can probably get rid of uh, this validation because it's it. handled by the JavaScript now. Although, do I won't because I might have situations where it gets submitted in a non JavaScript way in the future. All right, so let me pull up the controller, which is actually what I meant to do. Did you say in that JavaScript that it recognizes that it's not HTML5? Is it automatically using stuff to be very graceful? Not currently. Right now it just tells them, get a better browser. Um, and I think totally I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's graceful. It's degraded. <laughs> if you want to upload pictures, get a good browser. Someone's definitely being degraded there. Does uh, well, IE ten is out, right? IE nine, whatever. So this <laughs> the latest the version of IE the beta support. I actually think this is really just Chrome and 
Firefox, but I'm not really sure. And I think Opera. I think Opera. Safari. Safari. Yeah. Safari. Yeah. Opera, probably Safari. Well, it has to be HTML5, because this is a HTML5 way, rather than, like, the, some people use Flash to Thanks, upload guys. files. There are, there, there are Thanks like for coming. Flash things you can get to upload them. This is just straight HTML5. And I used a thing called File Drop, which. Um, That's but, the JS. Yeah. It, yeah. If you just look at my blog post on it, you'll find it. So, really, the uh, create action was fairly simple. You just have to return a, a JSON response. You know, and. Um, I posted my blog post and then, uh, oh crap, one of the Indie Ruby Brigade guys who isn't here tonight was suggested that I should return an error code, like a 422 or something, when it doesn't work, and he's right. <laughs> so anyways, it was, it's really pretty simple to do, and I, um, I should have prepared. Uh, for what it's worth, I just told him he should talk about this uh, like five minutes before I started talking up in that corner. Yeah, but this is the tutorial I looked at, this, this thing right here. And um, it's, it's pretty easy to just look through how they did it, and it, it works nice. And um, I was surprised at how easy it is uh, to do. And I copied that JavaScript. And then changed it. <laughs> and then I read it to make sure I knew what it did. Oh, right. It wasn't stealing anything. Just kidding. Any questions? Anyone? Real so quick. The, uh, yep, go ahead. I can, I can see what you had up on there, but it just looks like the JavaScript. Is that interacting with you? Is it getting any information from your model other than you know, a few? If something gets through your JavaScript stuff that you set up, it's just going to deny it via the model. But is, is the model interacting with that JavaScript at all and passing back like errors or anything like that? Um, or is there a, a path to do that easily through that? Well, the JavaScript is posting, is really posting, a, so my model is troop photo. So it's posting a troop photo form to the troop photo controller. And then the true photo controller is actually interacting with, you know, creating the model. It's still running all the validations. It's a normal controller, but it just responds to JSON. So you know, that's how it's. I'm not doing anything in JavaScript to like get to the model. You could probably return JSON yeah. with an error message or something like that. Yeah, and, and that's error. what I need to do. Is make the JSON return error message. Yes. Are those progress bars? Uh, talk about those progress bars. <laughs> <laughs> so, interestingly enough, the way this uh, this controller action works, they don't really progress. They go halfway and then they stop and then they're done. Does it like nice. pull to see if it finished uploading to S3? Um, yeah, there's a JavaScript action in there, a uh, function in there that it calls. Mm -hmm. I, don't totally understand it, but the way I understand it is it's really just, it just calls the post URL and waits until it gets a response. I see. And that there's maybe, maybe in PHP there's some, I didn't really read his PHP code, but he might have done something to update the status bar. So does your Rails code, it doesn't return until it's done uploading to S3? Right. Yep. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And what I really want to do is I want to switch to Carrier Wave Direct because this is really kind of stupid what I'm doing here in a way. But I'm uploading a photo to my app server and then pushing it to S3. And what Carrier Wave Direct does is, um, for one thing, Carrier Wave moves your um, uploader stuff off your model, which is nice. And then it all, Carrier Wave Direct just sends it straight to S3. And so it doesn't go through your app server and that's more awesome. Now, if you say simple instead of stupid, then you sound like you're bringing knowledge to the people. <laughs> I said stupid? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. No, it's, that's very cool. It's better than things I have done in the past to upload files by a lot. Well, <laughs> you know, when I, what was cool about this was I tried this about a year ago 
and I was just like, it was just seemed too hard, you know, and because all the articles were about doing it in some language other than Rails, and I'd get it to almost work, and then I couldn't get past the like how to do it in Rails step, and um, and so I had this mental block against it, but when I went to do this earlier this week, I was like, wow, this only took an hour. It was kind of, kind of awesome. And it looks good, and it's a cool, it's, users like it, right? So. It makes the site work like the rest of their computer. Yes. Right. It's always like that. Yep. They, are, they already had to learn how to work one computer. <laughs> they don't want to learn another. They don't want to learn another one. So do you find yourself kind of evangelizing anybody that uses group or um, when people come to me with IE6 or IE7 or IE8 issues, I tell them, you really need to get a new browser and I recommend Chrome. Can you do something with Chrome Frame or something? Can yeah. you automatically read that or something and, and there's a, install? There's a header you can set. <laughs> It'll say, if you have Chrome Frame, render this with Chrome Frame. And then there's some JavaScript you can have that'll put a bar across the top that says, you're using IE without Chrome Frame. <coughs> Click here to install Chrome Frame. <laughs> nice. Um, that's a good. And yeah, that, that doesn't that doesn't really require really admin really privileges really or anything. <laughs> so if they're like on their IE six machine at work, they can install Chrome Frame, and <laughs> it'll really work. How quick will that install? It's like four megabytes. Does that get installed with the requirement? No, the latest version doesn't last year. Just yeah, the latest version does not require admin privileges. I think it functions like a toolbar. Um, but it's, it's called new rendering engine. You don't need that. You probably just to install those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Every yeah, high six users are shown. I want background images up here. Speaking of Chrome, I think we should start a betting pool on when the version of Chrome passes the version of Emacs. <laughs> it hasn't yet? I mean, it's like 23 and 16 right now, but Chrome is That's really nice. catching up fast. I think Chrome might be It's just like, you should restart. I'm like, okay. I don't know, I made up a number. <laughs> I'm just saying, probably next three, four months, it's going to happen. It's going to be interesting.